The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 12th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be Pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out with the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com, and inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you got a slightly mixed bag out here. That slightly mixed has the semis up one point, then the Russell up 11. Dow's off 302, semis down, I'm sorry, the uh, S&P off 32, NASDAQ down 89, Tranny's off 57, gold's off 30 bucks, silver's down 85 cents, light sweet crude is flat right now, natural gas up a nickel, and the 30-year treasury up one point, trading out at 140.19. Dollar-wise, the upside, you've got Shopify up 36 bucks, 11%, Mercado Libre. 38 bucks, 6%. Amazon, 26 bucks, 1%. Dillard's, 22 bucks, 8%. Regenerin, 17 bucks or 3%. Google to the downside, 32 bucks. 10 on medical is off 29. That's 1 and 4 tenths percent. United Health Group, 15 bucks or 3%. So there's plenty to look at to the upside or to the downside. Where we're going to start today, because there are no questions that I have at this stage. Well, let me just make sure here. Yep. Um, so at this stage here, we're going to start with just the big picture. Then we'll dive down and take a look at the smaller term. Oh, we've got a call. So hold on a second here. Thank you. Uh, so we've got Roger from Boulder, Colorado. Roger, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks for asking. Uh, appreciated your help and taking us through these difficult times. Sure. My, and, my pleasure. Uh, now, um, my apology, I don't recall. What instrument is it that uh, we were looking at yesterday? Uh, well, it was. Uh, we were looking at the uh, Fibonacci numbers when ah. uh, the long-term um, Fibonacci numbers on the same scale uh, coincides with another uh, Fibonacci series. Great. What, what instrument um, was it that we were looking at? Uh, uh, we were looking at either Microsoft or Apple. I saw Microsoft, for instance, it does exactly the same thing as what Apple is doing. Uh, but ex except instead of 31.8, it, uh, 38.1, it is 61.8. So if you like, we can open up with Microsoft. I don't know if you see the same thing as I see, uh, or at least a program that I'm using. Sure, sure. So I, 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 I hopefully you're hopefully you're able to watch us, Roger, on Tiger TV, and just kind of follow along, I suppose, with with what I'm looking at. The first thing when I do take a look at Microsoft. Sure. And I have a weekly time frame chart up on our screen right here. Uh, price is trading below the swing point from the week that began March 7th. And then there was 184 million shares. We're already at 162. And on a daily basis, Microsoft does uh, an average, it looks like, uh, boy, some pretty decent volume. So it looks to me like on a weekly basis time frame, before we get to the Fibonacci's, that what we have on Apple, I'm sorry, on Microsoft is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And our first price projection will take us to 236. 
The second would be 214, and the third would be 187. Now, we use those as guideline areas. Because this only made a 57% retracement and prices along the left-hand side of that C to D leg, what this tells me, at least with regard to Microsoft, is more likely going to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D. Now, from a retracement standpoint, the first retracement on a weekly chart that I would draw in here, and again, the retracements, I mean, you're going from one swing point to the next. So it's not necessarily um, too subjective, but the swing point that I would use here that sticks out to me is the one from the week that began March 23rd, 2020. Kind of makes sense. So if we go from right. that low, right? If we go from that low right. up to the high on uh, November 22nd, so that would be one of the Fibonacci numbers that, uh, or Fibonacci sequences that I would use. Do you see that? Would you use that same sequence? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So in that instance, there we are below the 0.382 retracement, and these retracement, folks, for those of you not familiar with Fibonacci numbers, oftentimes each level acts as a floor. And prior to uh, well, this is a weekly chart. So the first floor would have been that 0.382 retracement level. If price had held that area, that's kind of what we refer to as a dead cat type move, um, a, a small move. But that's not what we have right now. So now we have price below the 0.382. I had shared with you before we even drew in these uh, retracement levels that more likely than not, this would do more than a one to one A to B equals CD. Now, this is a weekly chart. So it's over time. Doesn't mean it does it by next week or anything along those lines. But it does look like the real price target is in that 214 area. So that's the first Fibonacci number that I would use. The question is, Correct. on a chart like this, where's the next one that I would come up with? Well, for me, the next one would be the lows from 2018 um, would be a retracement level. But I'm not sure I'm answering your question yet. So let oh. me clearly understand your question with regard to retracements now. So take me through the next <clears throat> thought process. Sure. Um, Steve, uh, that was perfect number, uh, uh, $214. Uh, that's a 61.8% of that Fibonacci number. Right. Now, if you if we go back to, say, if we use the latest, uh, not going back to too far back, I'm sorry. If you, if you look at the previous high, which is in, in, which is in November, yeah. and then uh, that's our A point, and our B yeah. point of uh, January 24th, and then March 28th would be our high C point and projected, uh, projected uh, uh, 30, projected uh, 138, which is 1.38, would be very close to, um, to that number, 61.8%. Uh, so it looks like definitely it's gonna do more than one to one it would be 1.38 at least. You're talking about the A to B equals CD pattern? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So on the A to B equals CD pattern, you know, the way that the way that I like to, to use them is they're just they're a projection tool. So we don't necessarily have to use them as to price has to hit the exact number. You do have to get down to at least the one to one area. So that at least suggests that we should see two thirty six twenty eight. My my A to B equals CD work has me believe that this is more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the downside. That takes us that 214, 215 level out there. So it looks to me like that's where Microsoft is headed to. But do me a favor, Roger, hold on through this break. I just want to make sure I've answered your questions before we uh, hang up here. Sure. So we'll come back to you. And uh, folks, stay tuned. This is Steve Roach with TFNN. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education investors. 
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we're on the line with Roger. We're taking a look at Microsoft. And uh, Roger and I were looking at the weekly chart. We looked at the A to B equals CD to the downside. We came up with a uh, Fibonacci retracement level and a price projection of where we believe Microsoft is headed to, which was in about the 214 area. Roger, uh, I put up a, a monthly time frame chart for Microsoft. We can see that price is trading below the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. Month is not over, of course. But more likely than not, this suggests that price will pull back to its breakout area, which is 211.94. So we have one other charting tool that gets us into that 215 level out there. So I wanted to be able to share that with you. Is there any other questions you have about Microsoft or anything else that I can do for you? No, I appreciate it. I have one other question regarding the volume of the trades. Uh, or, or, um, with this... Uh, with this uh, trading that is automated trading that is happening, it takes away the emotion of the trades. And I was wondering, uh, that creates higher volume for certain days. Do we still consider that as a as a valid high volume day, or or um, how do we how do we address these high volume traders? Well, uh, high frequency traders, stuff like high that. I'm sorry, uh, high I, frequency traders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's correct. I, 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 to answer your question, um, there's not just one tool that uh, I that that any of us can rely upon to uh, interpret the markets. So, volume, from my standpoint, is just one of those tools. It's not the only tool, and it's the reason that I use other things that we talk about. We took a look at the TD9 count breakout level. We take a look at the task market profiles. Those things help us to establish where buyers and sellers are at. And uh, so so I do use volume, but I don't use it exclusively out here. You like to see if uh, you like to get a confirmation uh, on an A to B equals CD pattern. And it looks like that's what we're going to get in, in with regard to Microsoft on a weekly basis. And so when you pass that swing point, a place where price had stopped before, when price exceeds that volume, really gives you that confirmation of heading higher or lower, depending on whether it's an A to B equals CD to the upside or to the downside. So I do, you know, I, I use it, but I don't use it exclusively. Does that answer the question? Got it. Thank you so much. I appreciate your taking my call. Sure. Uh, my, my pleasure. Thanks for calling back, and I uh, appreciate it. And hopefully we'll speak again soon. Um, so. 
You, you bet. So let's kind of uh, do this, folks. Again, I mentioned I wanted to take a look at the bigger picture first. Then we'll go do the uh, drill down into the, the smaller time frame. So the bigger picture, we're going to take a look. at. Let me make sure I get to the right screen here now. We're going to first begin by taking a look at the S&P 500. So if you give me a moment up here, and when I say bigger picture, you'll see the time frames that we're using. And so you should see in the upper left-hand corner the S&P. So what I have along the top section here, is the cash indice, and along the bottom section is the equity future contract out here. Because really, both you and I use both of these in order to help us interpret the market. So when we start to look at the yearly time frame out here, we can see that you've got a TD9 count top. That was, you remember back in uh, November, December, we started looking at this saying, boy, this spells trouble based upon our TD9 count system out there. Now, when we look at the monthly time frame chart, you've got TD9 count tops there as well. Price appears to be targeting, just like Microsoft. We looked at Microsoft price target on a monthly basis. Likely, it's a TD9 count breakout level. Well, the S&P 500 and the ES Mini, really the same thing. So their targets to the downside would appear to be, or at least the first target. I'm not sitting here telling you this is where price is going to stop and hold, but it's a likely area where price would stop and hold. Is 37.23 on the S&P, 36.76 on the ES Mini. That's really confirmed this week, or at least at this stage of the game this week, because we look at the weekly charts for the ES and for the S&P. Both have roads mint indicator tops, and now we are below uh, their breakout levels. So the next price target for the S&P 500 should be 38.19. The next price target for the ES Mini is 37.52. When we take a look at the daily time frames out here, there's A to B equals CD patterns we know in the S&P 500. So if we were to get a bullish reversal candle, that would give us a short-term bottoming signal. Short of that, we're only in bar number five from a TD9 count standpoint. So an ATD9 count may or may not form uh, next week, but next week would be the time period where we'd be taking a look at that. So the bigger picture here for the S&P 500 is that we want to head lower, 37.23, 36.76 for the ES Mini. Now let's switch over from the S&P and do an S. Oh, okay, hold on a minute here. Uh, give me a second. Uh, we've got Jonathan in Miami. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks so much for asking. And you want to take a look, I believe, at Shopify. Is that correct? Uh, Shopify and Carvana. Uh, okay. Short both stocks, and both are having big rallies today. Want to get your take if their TD counts are over, if it's a reversal, or we're going back down again. Okay. Let's see if we can figure this out here. Give me a moment just to uh, change screens, and we're going to wait for Shopify to go ahead and populate itself. It should be done here momentarily, I hope. And uh, when you got into these short trades, did you have targets to the downside that you were gunning for? You know, just uh, seems like the fundamentals are deteriorating at both companies and the trends of the charts look really good to the downside. So I did a, I did a, interestingly enough, I did a, uh, a to B equals CD pattern. I, I think I did this yesterday or, or the day before on Shopify as I saw it breaking through its a weekly a swing point. Did that a couple weeks ago. And the A to B equals CD pattern gets us down to a minus 471, says it's going out of business. So I can't do the A to B equals CD pattern out here. But let me answer your first, first, your specific question. Do we see any kind of TD9 count patterns? We do not. What we see on the daily time frame, I'm going to expand this chart out. Are you watching us on Tiger TV, or are you in the den, or anything along those lines? Uh, watching Tiger TV. Perfect. So there's really two potential bottoming signals that we have out here. The first one, and the one that's most important, in my opinion, is that Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal. That's where price gets stretched to the downside, and the way that that pattern gets confirmed, to get a bullish reversal candle. Now, I'm not suggesting that you exit your trade because you have a longer term, perhaps a longer term view on this. But if price does close above this oscillator and change line, which is where it's trading right now, the exact number is 349.67. If price does close above that level, and not necessarily where we're at right now, but a little bit more, maybe the high of the day where we're at, that would then suggest that price should make its way to the 431 to 451 area. That is the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile and the center of its bullish structured daily profile. Because price is below that, a counter trend move should stop at 
So the first question is, based upon this daily time frame chart, our price closes above that red oscillator and change line. Is that the type of heat that you're willing to take? You don't have to answer that to me. That's the question that you need to you know, answer for yourself. But that's the first signal I see in Shopify from a daily time frame. The second potential bottoming signal is wave number seven. And that's the letter G that is down there. That doesn't get confirmed until you have a higher low. So the earliest that that could be confirmed would be tomorrow. If I look at the 195 minute time frame chart, it also has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal. It's 89 count bottom as well. And that suggests that price should head to 424.88. So do me a favor, Jonathan, hang on through this break. We're gonna come back and take a look at this. The other instrument you wanted to look at was? Carvana, CVNA. CVNA. So we'll come back to Shopify. We'll also take a look at Carvana. We'll be right back, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got Shopify up on our screen here. And uh, Jonathan, what I did during that break was uh, really trying to help identify for you kind of maybe a make or break point out here. And what I have up on my screen is the 30-minute uh, chart. Now, when we began our conversation, we are asking us about TD9 patterns. And it's really the TD9 pattern, but really it's breakdown levels that I'm going to point you to. And those are these green horizontal lines going across our screen out here. And the last time that Price was able to take one of those out, was on April 19th, take it out to the upside. Those are resistance levels. So it's been in place for a pretty long time, nearly a month out here. We can see that in the case of Shopify, its current TD9 count breakdown levels at 390.14. I would suggest that if price were to close above that, 
on a 30-minute basis for two consecutive bars. That is at least signaling to you that price could easily make its way back up to its prior swing point, and that's in the 490 area. So if you do see a close about 390.14, maybe then at that stage you go ahead and you uh, close out the short position. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's a, the only thing that I was able to find to really assist you with Shopify. Um, is there anything else that I can help you with on Shopify? Well, that's great. I appreciate that. Perfect, yeah. So the next one is going to be Carvana, CVNA. And CVNA looks like it's got a similar candle. As you said, it was rallying today. It's going to take just a couple of moments here for price uh, for these uh, charts to update. Uh, in the case of Carvana, it's all the way back into its 2020 low out here. Uh, it, it's 2020 candle, I should say, on a monthly basis. So this is suggesting that price should get down to 22.16 and test that low. So far, the low has been 28.35. So now let's see what these other charts are communicating to us. On a daily time frame, so first of all, on a monthly basis, price has hit a level of support, a TD9 count breakout level, 29.75. If price closes below that, it suggests that it's headed lower. The weekly chart does not have any kind of a bottoming signal, so there's no reason to jettison your short position there. The daily time frame, uh, today, you do have also wave number seven out there. Again, that can't be confirmed until tomorrow. Price is traded right up in resistance. It's oscillator and change line. If price were to close above this level, this level being 3908, that would suggest you could see more of at least a counter trend move. The next level of resistance, once price clears this oscillator and change line, is all the way up at $100.29 on a daily time frame chart out there. So you want to watch that oscillator and change line because that has really acted as resistance ever since April the 5th out there. And so it's for more than a month. And I would say if price closed above that, it would be signaling to us that you might see a change in character. Uh, any questions about that so far? Nope. That's Perfect. great. Okay. So now the uh, intraday time periods out here, um, what are these going to show us? So, again, doing the same thing as we did with the other instrument, Shopify, out there, looking at these TD9 count breakdown levels. The last time price was able to close above one of these, hmm, I got to go back even further. So it's been quite a while. It takes us back actually to April 4th. So that's kind of interesting. So what we have right now is on a short-term basis, you have cleared the TD9 count breakdown level, which is at 35.55. So then what that tells me is that watch that daily oscillator and change line. If you do get a close above that, that is at least going to suggest to you the potential of a further rally. Um, does, does that help? Does that make any questions about what I've shared so far? No, that makes sense. Okay. So then the only other level of resistance that I can see that if price takes it out, adds to that idea of potentially closing out that position is 46.90. And 46.90 is the first breakdown level on a 65-minute chart. And I would say if you get a close above that, odds favor that there's further rally left inside of Carvana. Okay? Gotcha. And then a longer-term ABCD pattern, uh, what could be the potential downside on this stock? <sighs> there isn't one. Now, let me show you why I'm answering the question that way. I'm going to switch over to our black background screens out here. And here is the monthly time frame. And so you can see it's pretty much been a straight line move. It's only bar number seven of a TD9 count, but it is back at these, oh, whoa, how about this? So, I mean, it does suggest that the monthly chart is, is at least suggesting that price should get down to that 2216 level just because you're pushing into it with volume. So that goes back to the question that Roger had had earlier. You know, when do I use volume? When don't I use volume? Well, this is pushing into a swing point with volume out here and on a monthly basis. And when you get into that swing point with volume, typically you'll go down and you'll test the bottom of that swing point. Um, but you want to, you know, you're going to take today's action and the information that we took a look at on those white background charts and use that to do your assessment. But there, there isn't an A to B equals CD to the downside um, that's going to get us, you know, other than maybe this thing going out of business. That's a possibility. Um, well, the, so the, the junk bonds are falling that, that they've issued, so that's my hope. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have to tell you, from a business model, I've never understood it. Um, you know, but but I'm older, and I the way I buy cars, I go kick the tires, you know, and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. So I've just never really understood 
the the whole business model of Carvana. But doesn't mean that it won't succeed. It just I haven't investigated it that much. It's just when I drive by one of those places. There's one along I-95 here when I go from here down to Miami, and every time I look at that thing, it's this big round cylinder with cars in it, and I'm like, really? It's I don't know. And I know they drop the cars off at your house too and stuff like that. But in any event, is there anything else that I can do for you? That's great. Thanks so much for your help. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And have a great day. That was Jonathan uh, down in Miami. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to switch back, go back. I think we were going to start taking a look at the uh, charts here for the Dow. Again, just the bigger picture. And then we'll use the uh, rest of the time frame to uh, start taking a look at the uh, Start taking a look at maybe smaller, shorter term time frames and what maybe is going on play by play basis. So give me a second here. We're going to change the screens. And now what you've got is the Dow, the Dow Equity Future contract. So let's get right to it out here. And in the case of the Dow, what we're really looking at is the weekly chart. The weekly chart shows we're clearly below, fun, we're below a hammer candle, hammer candle from February 24th. Once you close below the bottom of a hammer candle, and of course the week's not over, it says if you're long, you're wrong. What that really tells us, where's the next level of support? Well, in the case of the Dow, on a weekly basis, it's at 30,014. The Dow Equity Future contract, it's 29,027. And when we take a look at the daily time frames, no bottoming signals, busted out through those TD9 counts, busted through the February 24th lows, busted through a hammer candle on the Dow Equity Future contract for its daily time frame as well out there. At, uh, and there's no other bottoming signal that I have. So it suggests lower price. Bigger picture out here, uh, we could be headed to the 24,843 level. And I would say that would come into play if we get the Dow below 30,014. So that's kind of the bigger picture out here. It's not kind of, it is the bigger picture. But let's go take a look at the smaller picture. And then the smaller picture, let me see here. I think I want to change over to, you know, because what I like to do is really provide provide you with, with, with important information. And what, I, what do you mean by important information? Here's what I'm going to share with you. So let me get over to the screen. So we've seen a rally try to unfold so far today. Of course, we've seen that try to unfold over the last several weeks out here. But the levels that I want to pay attention to, so here's the NQ. And the NQ, this is just really showing us our TD9 count breakdown and breakout areas out here. But what I like to do is go through all the different time frames to figure out which one has is giving us the best signal information out here. And the best signal information, I believe, on the NQ is coming from the 120-minute time frame chart out here. I'm going to leave this up on the screen. You'll be able to take a look at it. And based upon the conversations we've had earlier, you'll be able to figure out where does price need to clear to tell us that we have more than a counter trend move underway. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So what we've got on our screen right now is the 120-minute time frame chart for the NQ. And what I've done is I've just left up the uh, TD9 count resistance levels, breakdown resistance levels, that typically will act as resistance. If price clears one of these levels, tells us price has broken through resistance and then set it higher, then we've got to figure out where it might be headed to. But the reason to use this is we can see that price is not broken above a TD9 count breakdown resistance level really at all since the highs. I mean, it did it for one bar back on April 5th, but the next bar got right back below the uh, breakdown level out there. Uh, we did the same thing back here on the trading session of uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning on April the 20th, but the next bar right back below that level. So how are we going to know when the, an actual bottom has taken place where there's going to be some type of sustained rally? Or where would some type of rally or counter trend move likely find resistance? Well, it's because of how well, and you can see that we've had plenty of, a couple of bounces where prices have gotten up to the breakdown resistance areas. And so in this instance here, we would use 12, 637.25 as the area to be watching um, on any type of a rally out there. And that's where price will either stop or signal to both you and I that this is more than just a counter trend move. Let's go to Mike in uh, Pennsylvania. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Steve, I'm doing great. Um, I'm kind of on the road and I um, missed a lot of your show, but I've been uh, back and forth with the SDS and the SSO on very short term trades. Okay. What is your bigger picture of the S&P 500 at this point? Uh, let's like on a 30 minute chart, Sure. So on a 30-minute chart, if I take a look at the ES Mini, the rally today, uh, first it formed a nice little roads momentum indicator bottom. But where the rally petered out was at 39.49.25. That was a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So really kind of, so thanks for the call, Mike. Um, this kind of helps us to, uh, to, to kind of bleed into the, the conversation I was having with myself just before I got you on the air. So if price were to take out 39.49.25, two consecutive closes above that, tell us that we're likely headed higher. That higher would be 40.42. That's not the message right now. What price is doing is it's testing the lows of this morning. And there is support right where it's trading right now. It's the bottom of okay. its 30-minute bullish structured profile. The bottom of that profile is at 38.81. We're trading right now at 38.80. So it is pulling back into a level of support. What you and I don't know is whether or not this level will hold. It should hold, Correct. but you know, will it hold or not? Um, we don't have the answer to that. Uh, on a different screen, let me see if I can get the ES Mini up real quickly here. I'm not going to change over. I'm just going to look at the volume, just kind of to feed into our overall questions here today. So the volume at the bar that formed at 940 this morning, about 80,000 contracts, as we pulled back in that last 10-minute uh, session, 
29,000. This next session doesn't end for five more minutes. You're at 16,000. So it seems like volume on the pullback here, you know, is not going to bust through those lows. Not that it can't, but we don't have a volume signal that says it's going to bust through the lows out there. What else can I, you know, uh, share with you on the 30-minute time frame chart? Well, that's that's pretty much it. I'm just wondering, uh, I, you know, kind of keeping a tight leash on everything and, uh, you know, um, wanted your take and the bigger picture much said you, we're into a support area with a lot less volume so watch for a bounce um yeah but yes potentially yes um you know what i'd like to what i'd like to do on the 30 minute chart to see you know do we have some other signals out here to see yeah, at this stage i think that yes that that's that's the appropriate uh way to look at it but bigger picture right now until we get something of significance on the daily time frame chart, it really does look like we want lower price. And the ES Mini, that'd be 37.52. Great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Pleasure listening to you. Uh, thank you. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for calling. That was Mike. Uh, let's go to a uh, next a couple of questions that have come in. I don't know if I'll get to everything here. Was there something? Oh, Amazon. There was a question that came in through the Tiger's Den. So let me switch over to those charts here. And this is an individual I believe is short Amazon. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's not going to change my analysis of, of uh, what Amazon is doing. So if you give me a moment here, we'll get back to those charts. Here we go. So what Amazon is actually doing today, can one stock, you know, hold up the market? Yeah, if it's Apple, it probably can. Uh, but Amazon is right up there, too. So the daily time frame, this individual is short. What Amazon is doing today, even though I don't have the A to B equals CD pattern in here, you can most certainly see that pattern. And so today, so far, as of 1.47 in the afternoon, you have a key reversal bar. Key reversal bar requires three things. One, you must be in an extended condition. Well, we're in an extended condition. Two, the high and low of the prior bar has to be exceeded. Okay, we've got that. And three, this is what we won't know until 4 o'clock, you have to close one tick in the opposite direction, the direction to the upside. So right now, we have that. So that would confirm a buy the D point. Now, all that that would suggest to us from an Amazon standpoint is a move up to its oscillator and change line, which has acted as resistance for quite some time. 2301 or thereabouts is that price target. If price were to get above that, you would expect on a daily basis that Amazon would then target where a counter trend rally should fail. And that would be between 2423 and 2478. So you have both a TD9 count pattern, if I didn't mention that, I'm mentioning that now as a bottom signal, and that's the message from the daily time frame. So the daily time frame is saying, I would say, if the market can find some mojo, then we should see Amazon continue to move higher out there. But right now, as I look at the markets, the Dow's off 478, we're back to red across the board out here, not seeing a whole lot of mojo when it comes to the markets out there. So in this case here, I don't know that Amazon is strong enough to uh, take on the overall market, so to speak, out there. But with regard to a daily time frame for Amazon, you've got your bottoming signals, or at least counter trend rally signal that should take price up to 23.01. On a 30 minute basis, we can see that this morning's rally ran right into resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 22.03. And folks, if you don't know this pattern, it's easy to learn. And it's really easy because you subscribe to Mastering Probability. You can do it for 29 days. It doesn't cost you a penny. And uh, you'll learn this tool. You'll apply it, and it will help you. And it works for all different time frames out there. And you can see it working. The nice thing is, is that it's already automated in my system, so it's not like I'm drawing in lines and areas and are trying to prove a point or something along those lines out there. So that's what we have when we take a look at <coughs> and I hope that uh, helps. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me uh, see what we've got coming in here for questions. Delete that message. And the first one is coming in from Dennis. <coughs> no. <clears throat> and this is to take a look at Apple. So let me get the Apple charts up here on our screen. And the question is, what's the two-month outlook for Apple? You know, that might be hard for me to do, but what I can share with you with regard to Apple, when we get back from this breakout here, is where our 
levels of support to the downside and any other patterns that we might be able to identify. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Dennis writes in, he wants to know what the uh, next two-month outlook for Apple is. And so the first thing that we notice here, we look at this uh, multi time frame set of charts, is on a monthly basis, Apple is pulling back into a potential level of support. That potential level of support is the bottom of its monthly profile. That's printing at 140.48. Now we're about 20 cents, 25, 30 cents below that level right now. It's a monthly time frame chart. It's only the 12th, say the 12th, something like that. Um, so we don't know whether that will hold or not, but it's sitting at a level of support. In the case of the weekly chart, price is testing a breakout level of support, 143.16. Now, I don't know if Apple's going to close above this come tomorrow or not. If it closes below that, then the signal there would be a move down to the next breakout area. That would be 127.07. To a certain extent, that's confirmed by the daily time frame. The daily has an A to B equals CD pattern. It's actually at the one-to-one -one level as we speak. Um, let me see here. Uh, I've got to, I got something screwed up. We're going to unscrew it. 
Let me just want to see where we're eh, I'm not even going to do that. Forget that. Forget that. Here's what we do know is on a daily basis, we're at wave number seven as well. And that can be a bottoming signal. If there is a bottoming pattern out here, we would see it reflect itself on the short term time frame charts. Well, 195 minute, don't see anything there. 130, nothing there. 165, nothing there. 30 minute chart. Bullish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. 15 minute, we're not even going to mess with that. So what is our prognosis for the next two months for Apple? Price is sitting at support, Dennis. And until we know whether or not these levels fail, and you won't really know till tomorrow, if I were to answer the question for you, I'd be guessing. Now I don't want to guess. Let's let the market communicate to us what its intent is. What you should know is that Apple right now is sitting at support for the monthly time frame, potentially the weekly, in your wave number seven, which can be a bottoming signal for the daily time frame. Folks, I'm going to try to do my show tomorrow from eight to nine. I'll do my best. Um, so we'll see what happens. If not, then I'll see you on Monday. Have a terrific Thursday. Thanks for being here, folks.